Now, before we go any further, I just want to share with you some basic insights into the application. It's Dreamweaver. Anything about a file is under the file menu. So if you want to publish this to a browser, under the file menu, I can go to preview and browser, and I can pick any kind of browser I want to basically upload to. Now, I have this set up. I've made custom changes to this in my full version of the course. I will share with you how to do that. So I'm just going to go to Firefox right now. Now, important step here. I actually just make myself a new window here. Okay, notice that this is coming from my local computer. I haven't uploaded to the server itself because we haven't set up what's called FTP, which is File Transfer Protocol. I'm going to share with you how to do this. Now, where you would get this information from is whoever you're hosting your site with, whether it's GoDaddy or Register.com. Now, pay close attention to what I'm about to share with you. As a service to my students, okay, I own my own servers out in a professional data center out in San Francisco, California. I now own over 13 servers. I make a lot of money with my regular clients, but to my students, I provide them very low cost, inexpensive reseller hosting plans. And I mean very inexpensively, where, you know, if you sold a, if you, it, the, the plans that I can give you, if you sold a uh, server space, to your clients for even five bucks a month, you can make yourself you know, thousands of dollars a year. And I will share with you how to do that. So I provide hosting space to my students and it's at a subsidized reduced course. So it's not a cost rather, it's not free. It's, it's a reduced cost. It's cheaper than you get anyplace else. And I do that as a special service to my students. So let me go back into Dreamweaver and share with you how to set up FTP the correct way. Now again, if you do your hosting through me, then I provide the FTP information for you. If you're doing your hosting someplace else, you have to get the FTP from them, and I will share with you where to put it inside a Dreamweaver. Okay, so in our very first or second video in this series, I share with you how to define your site. So if I go to Site Define Site, it's still under there. So I'm gonna to go to Site and Manage Sites, and I'm gonna basically double click the site that we're gonna manage. Okay, which brings up this menu that we saw before. Now, based on these choices, we already defined our site, but we haven't set up a testing server and a web server to host our content. Okay, so I'm going to go to servers, and based on these choices, I'm gonna click right here. And I'm gonna put in the name of our server, which is Dreamweaver. In fact, if I wanna to be totally lazy, I can actually cancel this, but I'll just type it in. So Dreamweaver CS, CSS classes. Now again, I'm not going to, I'm a two finger typist. I, I blame Nancy Fishkoff for my two finger typist. Uh, when I was in this anyway, that's a long story, but there was this girl in the seventh grade and I got distracted and never learned how to type and I blame it on her. All right, so I'm gonna take the name of, and I'm gonna put that right here. Now, if you host with my servers, the FTP is simply the name of the site, .com. Now, this is something you really wanna pay attention to. The root directory on most Linux servers, the root directory is typically either public underscore HTML or www. On my servers, it's either or. So I'm gonna put in www forward slash. Now, notice what that does. That puts the WW over here. What you'll need to do is take that WW and move it to here, because that's where it goes, WWW there. Then you put in the username, whatever you want your username to be, and you put in your password, whatever your password is going to be, and you hit save. Now, very important step here. When I hit save, I'm not done, because in addition to the web hosting space itself, I also want to set up what's called a testing server. Okay, now let me take a second to explain that. Dreamweaver, double click this again, Dreamweaver does give you the option of having your hosting different from your testing server. Now to save time, because I'm not a person that likes to jump through oops, I pretty much religiously make my testing server the same as my regular hosting server. It's the same thing. You can choose to make it two different things, okay? But I highly suggest you make it the same thing, and then later on, just basically rename the files into a subdirectory. It's really that simple. So I click here, I click testing server, and I hit save. And I hit done. So now what that does for me is I now can take these files and I can transfer these files to the web. Okay, now here's the exciting part, okay? 
I'm going to go to the name of my site right now. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go to a web browser. And inside my web browser, I'm just going to put the name of the site. Now, this is a brand new raw site. There's nothing on the site at all. It doesn't even have an index page. It's just a directory of nothing. So what I want to share with you is we set up our FTP, but I want to replace this nothing page with the home page that says something like under development coming soon, you know, and put an email address in there, et cetera, et cetera. So let's understand how we can do that very simply. Now, keep in mind, this is the test page, the, the page that needs to get approved by the client. So we're not going to use this page. We're going to make ourselves a new file, file new, HTML page. And of course, we're going to title the page correctly. Now again, just, I'm not going to repeat myself, but you would put in, you know, if you're in the wholesale coffee business, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you put in the name of whatever you want to put in there. I'm going to hit the save file. I'm going to replace over, not the index page from the client folder, but the index page we originally created. Now a little trick here, I can just click on that page right there. That's a little Mac trick. I'm pretty sure it works on Windows as well. I'm just going to click the page right here. And it's going to replace over that page. Okay, now, here's what I want to do. And it's a really simple little shortcut. This is simply, I would use this just for what I'm about to share with you. I just want to change the home page. So I'm going to put in, you know, welcome to name of the site. Learning how to spell certainly helps. Uh, I'm going to hit the return key under development. I know I'll fix that in just a second. And then something like dot, dot, dot coming soon. Well, I really can't type today, can I? Let's just spell this whole thing. C O M. Two fingers type. Two finger typist. Thank you, Nancy Fishkoff. All right. Now here's what we're gonna do. Make a change. Save a change. We're gonna make this header one, command one. We're gonna make this header two, command two. And we're also gonna hit the return key right here. I'm gonna put put something like contact us, and I'm gonna make that an email address. And I'm gonna share with you some really cool stuff here. Now. Without going into CSS and everything we did in the previous video here, and this is just a very simple, short and sweet to the point for this page. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to go to either Page Properties by clicking right here, or Command J Macintosh, Control J for Windows. And I'm going to set up my default font. Now, this is just a dummy test page. Okay, I'm going to set the text color to white, which is simply pound symbol FFF, or you can click right here under white. I'm going to select the background color to maybe this baby bluish color right about there. Good. And based on these choices, I want to set the link color to be, let's make the link color to be this vibrant yellowish color. And I don't want it to have an underline. Okay. So here's what this will do for us. And for the H1 tag, by the way. I want the H1 tag, uh, well actually we'll just leave that the way it is, that's fine. We'll just leave that the way it is and hit OK. And there you go. Now in order to affect the information, we're going to select the information and if I click CSS down here, I can put the whole thing in the center. And I'm just doing this really simple, it's a no-brainer. Okay. Now part of what I wanted to share with you is one of my biggest pet peeves when somebody emails me from a website, whether it's for marketing or whatever purpose, is I always like to fill in, pre-fill in the subject line. It's one of my biggest pet peeves, somebody that sends me an email and it's a blank subject line. Or what's worse is they send me an email and here it is, uh, you know, J January or December 31st, 2013, and they're sending me something with a heading from last summer's barbecue. Uh, oh, what does that have to do with today? You know, my, my 71 old year my 71 year old mother who's passed away a couple years ago was smart enough to know to change the subject line. So I assume people do that, but they don't. So I'm gonna share with you a way around that. So I'm gonna select right here and I can go to the insert menu, insert menu, and based on these choices, I can insert dates, I do all kinds of cool stuff. Now one of the things we do want to insert is an email link. Okay, contact us. And you'd put in, you know, whatever you want your email, that's what it's gonna say, contact us, whatever your email address is gonna be. But here's how I can populate. I'm gonna share with you really simple. Here's how I can pre-populate the subject line. You simply put in your email address, whatever your email address is, or the client's email address is. 
question mark, as in query, subject equals, I want more info, spacing and all that stuff, more information about your website, yada, yada, yada. Now, let's say that you wanted to pre-populate or you wanted to send yourself a copy of that. So you could do and, as in the ampersand, CC as in carbon copy or closed copy equals, and then put in whatever you want your email to be. My email at, you know, whatever you're putting, me.net. So that's a very, very simple way. So let's just review that. It's the name of the email address, question mark, subject equals, whatever you want your subject to equals. So you can actually pre-populate the body. You can pre-populate the carbon, the CC, the BCC. So if you want to do a BCC, change it to BCC. And hit OK. Now, here's the, here's the really cool part. Because, because I set up the FTP, for those of you that have worked with FTP4, maybe with Transmit or, or uh, Fetch or uh, WS Pro, you don't need to do that. Dreamweaver will do the work for you. In fact, Dreamweaver is very wonderful for FTP because there's no dragging and dropping. It knows exactly where to put the files. Let me share with you how simple this is. Under the file menu, file preview and browser, Firefox. It's going to ask us a couple of questions here. First of all, it's going to say, do you want to basically put this on the testing server? Uh, somehow my internet's acting a little slow here, so just one second. So it's going to say that you want to put this on the testing server. Well, if I say no, well, nothing's going to happen. So I would say yes. Then it's going to say, do you have any dependent files? I talk about this in great detail in my full course, which you will get for 10 bucks by clicking the link below. Don't be cheap. Invest into your future. Invest in the proper training. If you don't think my training's worth 10 bucks, then <laughs> I can't help you. I, I really can't. I'm here to give you some really great information. I don't have any dependent files. An example of a dependent file would be a graphic uh, image, uh, external style sheet, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to say no. So it's going to take this very page and it's going to publish it to the browser for me. I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to drag, I don't have to drop. Dreamweaver knows exactly where to put the file and there you go. This is what I had before, which is no page, and here's the, my new page that's on the server. If I refresh this page, by the way, you'll see that it replaced that. Now, let's say that you had a typographical error in here or your client's going, oh, these colors got to go. How can I fix that? Let me share with you how we can do that. So back inside of Dreamweaver, okay? Now, let's say that you did this on your work computer. You send the client the information. You get home and sh the, the client hates. It's like, I don't know what you're thinking, but this blue is horrible. Well, here's what you need to do then. You'd have to log on to your site under Window Files. Now, that's already up here right there. If you click right here, that's going to give you a split screen between your local files and remote files. Now, keep in mind, let's use a little bit of imagination here. You did this from work, okay? If you go home and set up your FTP at home, you could then log on to your server, select that file, and download that file to your local computer. You can do that one of two ways. I can either select the file at the download, or I could simply double click. And it's going to say, do you want to bring any dependent files? We don't have any. I could say no. So now I could simply go to Command J again, make those changes. Maybe they want to make this a darker color. Great. Maybe they want to pick a different font. Great. And hit OK. So now I've made the changes. So when I'm done making the changes, I make a change, save a change, and go to the File menu, Preview and Browser, Firefox, Testing server, yes, dependent files. I don't have any dependent file changes. And just like that, zippity doo dot day, your client's happy, you're happy, I'm not happy because I don't know why my internet connection is taking so long. So this is what we had, and this is what we have. Really that simple. Incidentally, if I refresh this page, there you go. Now, obviously, if you want to have different versions, then you're going to have to have version 1, version 2, version 3, version 4 of the name of the file. Okay, so this is a good head start. And if I click right here, so because I set this up the correct way, watch this. If I click right there, that's automatically going to pre-populate the subject line and it's going to BCC or CC me, whatever I put in there. So how 
cool is that? Hey, that's worth the 10 bucks right there, that little trick right there. Are you kidding me? I have people from all over the world that would pay at least $12.35 for that trick. You're only paying $10 for the whole course. <laughs> so thank you very much for being here. Like I said before, you will get this intro to Dreamweaver, which has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of great stuff. Read the reviews. Normally $69. Keep this to yourself. Please, if you write a course review, don't mention the price that you paid in your course review because that's not fair to the other students that paid more. I try to keep my prices low to begin with. I think $69 is a great start for something to go out and make money with. Anyway, I'm offering this as a special end of the year, New Year's, get started making money in 2014, whatever kind of deal you want to call it, for 10 bucks. Hey, if uh, if you don't need this, hey, so you give it, you know, buy it for, for 10 bucks, give it to somebody as a gift for somebody that can, you know, maybe you got an uncle that's uh, been out of work for a while or or somebody that needs help. I mean, you know, be generous. Give it, buy, buy them this course for 10 bucks and say, hey, here you go. Make yourself some money, knock yourself out. Robert's a great teacher. Thank you very much for being here. My name is Robert Farrell. If there's a better, faster way to learn things, I'm here to help you every step of the way. But don't fool yourself into thinking you're gonna just learn this stuff by watching some free courses, because you're really not. If you really want the good stuff, you want to learn how to do this the right way, then let me help you every step of the way. The $10 that you're going to spend for this course is going to basically pay off uh, huge, huge. You, you know, if you can't, hey, like I said before, build a website for 20 bucks, you just doubled your money. Talk to you soon. I want everyone to have a wonderful, prosperous 2014. Thank you for being here. My name is Robert Farrell. Carpe diem.